everybody it's sam here thank you for watching today so i'm going to show you how to make this floating shadow box i have already made these before on the channel this is a six by six size and i think i made the other six by six probably about two years ago but i'm pretty sure it's not as deep as this one they're all under a shadow box playlist that will be popping up now i've also done a five by seven version which i shared and i think i have another five by seven as well on there so there's plenty of other inspiration if you like this style it's really fun i've got ones where you don't attach anything onto the sides it's just a nice shaped fun fold card you don't have to cut the aperture out you can leave that as a solid piece and just have nice decorative papers on there and i think if you did want to cut the aperture you could pop vellum in there and then lights and have it as maybe a decorative piece or a 3d card that stays in that shape because you wouldn't be able to pop it flat if you had the lights maybe you could play around but the whole thing folds flat and you'll see that will fit into your six by six envelope or one of my box cards again they pop up along the tutorial and then on the back you have your space to write your message as well i'll just show you the five by seven this was one i made a couple of, no a year ago sorry and i keep this one in my craft room i really love this and it's featuring jerry the giraffe Lots of you will be familiar with this one and I've got my embossing folder in the background there. So if you've got this product and you've maybe missed this tutorial, again, I'll link that in this video. But today I'm going to show you how to make this fun six by six one and we're going to make it as a Christmas card. So I've got a big pile of stuff here because I've actually used so many different bits and pieces to make the card. Because it's a Christmas version, I was pulling out bits from old collections and just having some fun with it. So I've used the Daisy May Designs kit. This was box number 12 and I pulled out the bird bath after a lady in the live craft along where I made this one said it would look really nice with the bird bath so if you've got the daisy may kit this is the bird bath stamp that I've used here I've just got mine just stuffed with all of the bits and pieces that came in the kit there um, just so I always remember to use them so you'll see I've already stamped and colored the bird bath I started doing a funny brown color and thought no I don't like that at all but you're not going to see any of that anyway and then I've just used nuvo drops with some glitter on top and then I've used glossy accents there as well just to get that lovely wintry effect for all of the decoration I'm not going to use the leaves that I die cut like I've done on this one I have stamped and coloured these holly leaves in all different sizes and they're using the John Next Door stamp and holly die plate there this may still be available, I'm not sure, but that's how it looks when you stamp it and you have these registration markers, which you then line up your die with and then run that through. So you can see there that just, you line up each corner and then that will give you the perfect cut. So I've already gone ahead and cut, coloured, done all of that kind of stuff. For the sentiment on the front, I've already stamped and heat embossed the Christmas wishes. And this is from a Simply Made Crafts Christmas stamp set. Again, I think this one's still available. Everything will be linked below. And then for the lovely birds that you would have seen in that first card, this time I've done the robins and I've actually done the outline die this time with them and then stamped them. I've actually coloured them with some coloured pencil as well this time, but it's using this lovely stamp set here and it's your layered birds and it's from the Simply Cards and Papercraft magazine, Little Birdies. When I last looked, this was still available. So again, just check the links below if you like it, but it gives you three different style birds. So you can see I've got the blue tip there without the dark outline. This is the robin and then there's also a finch. I'll just show you because you want to keep this. This is what you can, did I print this off? I can't remember if it was printed or if it was in the magazine, but this is it here and it shows you how to stamp and layer up those different birds. So it's nice that you can use it all round, you know, all through the seasons. The die I use there is what I've used in this one along with these smaller leaves and then they're just the circle dies. And I also popped googly eyes on them which you may or may not notice but it's just a little bit more detail there which is quite cute everybody always asks what i use so i always like to go through it at the beginning and then the paper pad for the background papers so i actually used my scene paper pad for the bird one here and it's just this one in the middle but for today i'm using the north star again and i've got this lovely snow scene and you'll see how that one looks there really lovely Okay, so first of all, really easy to do. You want two pieces of 10 by six card. I've got this gorgeous, I wanna say it was a Phil Martin card stock. It's got that lovely kind of glimmer to it. It's like an oyster color. So this is 10 by six, two pieces. So you're gonna score it one, two, eight, and nine. And you wanna do that on both pieces. 
You then want two pieces of pattern paper that are five and three quarters squared. I've also got another piece of five and three quarters square, and this is for the back. I've already stamped my message there. And then I've got a piece of acetate, which is also five and three quarters square. The acetate's optional, but it really does give that front piece stability again after you've cut your aperture out. And I just think it gives it a really kind of special look. It looks like, you know, a really expensive looking card. So that's all of the measurements. So before we burnish anything, I want to stick down these two pieces here. So if you've got, you know, uh, two different kind of patterns, you might want one that's going to go on the inside and then a different one on the front. We'll say this is the one that's going to be on the inside. So I'm sticking that one down there. And then I've got this one for the front and it's going to go in that middle square. And you should have a nice little border. And then I'm also going to stick down these four pieces here, which I forgot to get the measurements for, but they're five and three quarters by three quarters of an inch. And they're going to go in these little panels and it just continues that seam. So I'm going to get all of that stuck down. And then I'm going to take the frame from, this is a Tonic Studio, seamlessly beautiful Celtic cross. And I'm going to pop this in the centre here. I'll give you the measurements. I think it was about four and... Yeah, four and, well, it was in between, yeah, so four and five eighths, or four and three quarters, four and a half, around that kind of size. You don't have to have it as a square shape. You could have this any shape that you want. I'm just going to tape this down and run it through my machine. Then I'm going to burnish the score lines. So the two closest to the inside, so the two, you're just going to fold so they're mountain folds like so. And then these ones here, you're going to fold into valley folds. If you want to flip it over and run it through and, you know, score back over the lines on the opposite side in your scoreboard, then do so. But this is a really strong cardstock and um, I'm not getting any cracking at all there, but you want that shape. Okay. So again, you're going to fold both of those inside ones and then like so. So actually these, the back one, you have them as valleys and then these are mountains. You basically want to have it so that they can form that shape there. So you can see how now I've got my scene, you know, it flows throughout. So next I want to start kind of positioning the birds because I'm, well, I'm going to have the one inside and it's going to be the same as this one. And you can see it's on some acetate, which is sandwiched between these two uh, pieces here. Now, because I'm bringing in this one, I need to decide whether I want that on the outside or inside, because I'm kind of thinking on the inside and having him as if he's just flying down to it. And then I just want to position my sentiment will work quite nicely there. So it's like he's just going to land on it. So when you pull him in and out, it will, yeah, I think that looked quite nice. And then that's going to come down here I think like so. That can come down a little bit because I'm going to cut off the bottom anyway. I think that's going to look quite nice. And then this bird is going to be here on this twig. And then I'm just going to cover the area with the holly and the berries here. So I've got a little piece of acetate here. The width of it is entirely up to you. It depends on what you're going to have attached. But I think I done one inch on the other one. And then I'm going to bring this down. I think I went quite, I, I know I remember cutting it down. It's, again, it's entirely up to you because you're going to have a different scene to me. Four inches. I think I done three and a half. So I'm going to take mine to three and a half by one. And then I'm just popping some red tape at the end. And I'm going to stick this about there. You don't need to stick it right up to the edge because you don't want it to be seen. But now I can just pop the bird on there and that's going to move back and forth like so. I think that's going to work perfectly. So then I'm just going to pop some red tape on the other end and then just stick my bird down like so. Okay, again, I'm just going to pop this on just so I could see. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. So now I'm just going to snip along the bottom of that. And I'm going to pop this on a little bit of foam and stick that one down. Okay. 
Okay, so that's all I'm going to have inside. Once you're happy with what you've put inside the card, then you can attach your piece of acetate if you're using it. So I've just ran my red tape already around this. Again, this was five and three quarters squared. I'm just going to flip this over. This is actually a piece of shrink plastic. I found it really cheap and I thought that's going to work fine. So um, it's really, really strong. Just make sure that you burnish it well so it goes darker in colour and that means that it's stuck fully onto your surface like so. So now, I don't know if you noticed before, but it was bowing when you would pull it in and out, whereas now it's completely straight and that will go like so and you can really see the bird moving. So I'm going to stick this down, but before I do that, I'm just going to run some tape just over the plastic here because the glue will just kind of slide on that. It won't really stick very well. You might end up having it lift slightly. So I'm just going to cover that and then I'm just going to add my Kalel glue down the other sides. So I've just added my glue there and then just stick down. Do one at a time. Get it lined up and then you can pop the other one like so and just give that a moment to dry okay so now all that's left is the rest of the decoration so like i said i'm going to have a branch here with the other bird on top i'm going to have my sentiment here and then i've got these holly leaves which I'm going to have just dotted around. So I'm probably going to have one up there. I've got to remember I want to keep it within that size, otherwise I'm going to have to make an even bigger envelope. So I might just bring that across a little bit so it's more like, more like that. And then we'll have some around the bird so it's like it's actually, you know, sat perched in the holly bush something like that i might even just pop a little bit of holly on the actual bird bath there as well i've got even smaller ones here so we could pop a very small one on that bit of the branch you get the idea i'm just going to have a little play around pop it on high speed and you can see where i go with it everything stuck down i think it looks really nice i'd already added the glossy accents to the berries so you can see them shining as well and then with the leftover little die cuts there i popped them on the back stuck my matte layer down there as well and that's all ready for me to make my box which i'll do nearer to christmas once i know exactly how many i need to make then i can just batch make those but i think it's come together lovely so i'll just bring in the other version this is actually going to probably end up being a retirement card take it easy and then i'll have happy retirement on the back but again just to show you how you can turn these card shapes into cards for so many occasions and uh, I think now that's the third Christmas card that I've made. So I'm quite pleased with myself. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial today. I will link as much as I can in the description box below. I will pop up now the other pop-up shadow box cards. So the other 6x6 and the 5x7 versions if you want to check those out. And if you've enjoyed today and you haven't subscribed to my channel, if you hit the subscribe button and then click the little grey bell, that will go red. And that means that you'll then get notified every time I upload a new video. As always, thank you for watching and I'll be back again soon.